going on everybody? It's Richard Koberger here, the Blue Collar Nerd, coming at you with another release notes video. Now this one's pretty dense. We've got a lot to go over, so buckle in. As always, timestamps are in the description down below to help you navigate this video, and let's jump in. So starting out under the new features section, we have a new report relating to the Service Titan web connector to QuickBooks Desktop. So the transaction reconciliation report is used to reconcile transactions between Service Titan and QuickBooks Desktop. The results of the reconciliation display in the reconciliation status column for each transaction, which allows you to validate if the transactions match between both systems. And in order to use this report, you do need to be on the QuickBooks 2.0 web connector. So if you're not seeing that report, that's probably why. Get with your CSM to get the ball rolling on that. Next, under marketing, we have a new marketing analytics dashboard. And you wanna stick around for this note even if you're not using Marketing Pro because this one actually affects everybody. Use marketing analytics to understand your top performing campaigns and categories across a range of different criteria and see the progress over time with performance graphs for key marketing metrics. Yeah, so this is a really cool new marketing dashboard and this marketing dashboard is going to be available to everybody, Marketing Pro or not. So if you don't use Marketing Pro, then you'll see a new marketing tab up in the main navigation bar that you haven't seen before. And if you are using Marketing Pro, then you've already had that tab and you're familiar with it, but you'll now have this new dashboard in there. And this new dashboard gives you a single place to go and look at all of your marketing analytics. And I really love the visualizations here. So you can see trends if you're up or down, what percentage you're up or down. And you have these graphs to track trends over time. Powerful stuff, definitely check out this new dashboard. All right, next under invoicing, you can now bulk email batched invoices. So on the invoice screen under the batch export transactions section, if you pull up some batch transactions, you'll see this new button that says email all. Clicking that will pull up this window where you can check off individual invoices or just click select all. And then you also have these check boxes at the bottom to include all forms or include all attachments. And then you can click that bulk email button and that will send them all off at once. So if you send invoices a lot from the office, then this is going to be a very handy feature because you can send your batched invoices out to multiple customers all in one click of a button. All right, that's it for new features. Moving on to the improvement section of these notes. So under general enhancements, we have enhanced costing precision. So many unit cost fields now support up to 10 digits after the decimal point, allowing you to set more precise costs for your equipment and material fields. Enhanced costing precision applies to unit cost fields in office estimates, inventory, accounting, memberships, and price book. Previously, unit cost fields only supported two digits after the decimal point, which could lead to some discrepancies between your accounting software and your vendor invoices and Service Titan. So something important to note here is that when you're navigating through Service Titan, any cost fields that require more than two decimal places, you'll still see it in Service Titan rounded to the two decimal places, but you'll also see this little three dots icon. And then if you hover over that, you'll see the full cost up to 10 digits after the decimal. All right, next under call booking. Recurring service event summaries are automatically added to the job summary. We heard that many of you have information saved in the summary of your location recurring service that's important for both your CSRs and technicians to see. Now, when you're booking a job with a recurring service event from the calls page, the summary of each recurring service event is now added to the summary box. Yes, and that is when booking recurring service events from the calls page, which is a configuration that could potentially still be off for your company. So if your CSRs aren't seeing that use recurring service events button on the calls page when booking a job, talk to your CSM, they can get that turned on for you. All right, next under content portal. We have content portal enhancements. So the content portal is now more intuitive to use. Specific improvements include new technicians added to a content portal audience now automatically have access to existing content portal posts, as well as scheduled and expired posts. Previously, new technicians had to be granted access to older posts manually. And changing a technician's business unit now grants them access to all of the content portal posts that their new business unit has access to. Yeah, so basically the content portal has gotten a tune up here. The content portal, of course, being that place where you can go and post content for your technicians to see out in the field. 
I feel like it's one of those features that can slip people's minds, so I just wanna remind you about it. And it used to be like when you added a new technician, it was just a hard line in the sand, so they could see anything you added to the content portal going forward, uh, but they couldn't see any of the previous stuff. And same thing if you changed their business unit and you had something assigned to only show to the new business unit and not the old one, they can only see anything added going forward. They couldn't see anything that was already there. But that has now changed and it behaves now more how you would expect. If you add a new technician, then they're able to see everything that all the other technicians are able to see in that business unit. Next, under dispatching, we have mass rescheduling of multiple jobs all at once. Rapidly adjust to changing business circumstances by rescheduling or reassigning large numbers of jobs quickly. For example, if your business operates outdoors and can't work in the rain, dispatchers can mass reschedule jobs to subsequent days when technicians get rained out. Yeah, so like the note alludes to here, this is gonna be really helpful for businesses where weather is a really big factor in whether or not you can perform a job. So like if you do pest control and, and you can't spray in super windy conditions and it's really windy today, then you can reschedule all those types of jobs all in one fell swoop. You can also choose to unassign technicians in bulk here, which makes it easier for dispatchers to redo the schedule. Next is click to call technicians from the job record. To make it easier to call your technicians, you can now click on their name from the job record and call them. Note that calls are not recorded and can't be listened to and that technicians must have a valid phone number listed in their technician profile to receive calls. Yeah, so this is kind of an extension to that feature that let us call technicians from the dispatch board. We can now do that same thing from the job records. You just click on their name there and you'll get this drop down menu where one of the options is call technician. Next, we have an audit trail for adjustable capacity planning. To give you more insight into which of your CSRs are using adjustable capacity planning effectively, jobs scheduled or rescheduled without using Git availability are now noted in the audit trail. The audit trail indicates whether the CSR clicked Git availability and scheduled the job manually anyway, or if they didn't click Git availability at all. Yeah, and of course this only applies if you are using adjustable capacity planning. That is a gated feature, so if that's something you're interested in and aren't using already, talk to your CSM about it. But when you are using that feature, that gives you this get availability button when booking or rescheduling a job. So basically now with this feature in the audit trail, it is going to tell you whether they clicked that get availability button and booked off of that, or clicked it and then decided to book it manually instead, or didn't click that button at all. Link in the description down below for my Zapier tutorial where I show you how to use Zapier to automatically send an electrical shock through your CSR's mouse whenever they don't click the get availability button. I'm kidding, please, that's that's not real. Don't, don't electrocute your employees, please. Next, under Intact. Now, most of you watching this are probably QuickBooks users, so you can go ahead and skip this section, but if you are using Intact, export payments without reliance on invoice export errors. You can now export payments without resolving export errors related to invoices the payments were taken for. Additionally, if a payment is exceeded before an invoice, the payment is reflected as an advance payment in Intact. This gives you the flexibility to close your bank balance at the end of the month in time. Under Jobs. Property data is now accessible from estimates. So when looking at an estimate from the office, you'll now see a new link that allows you to go to the property data. So property data, really cool feature that we got very recently. You've been able to access it from the call booking screen. You've been able to access it from the dispatch board from the right click menu. You've been able to access it from a job page and you've been able to access it in the mobile app. And now when you're viewing an estimate from the office, you can also access it from there. Next, you can now manually edit skills for individual jobs. So skills is an excellent feature that allows you to make sure that the right technicians are getting assigned to the right jobs. You can assign skills to job types and then assign skills to technicians so that when a dispatcher is assigning a job to a technician, if those skills don't match up, they will get warned about that. It's a great insurance policy, especially with maybe newer dispatchers who aren't as familiar with your team, or it's especially indispensable if you're using a third-party answering service to book calls and service Titan. So now with this enhancement, you can manually edit skills on the individual job level. And this allows you to cover for one-off situations where maybe a job type typically doesn't require a specific skill, but in this one particular case, it does. And to make those edits, you simply hit the edit pencil on the job page and you'll see a skills section. All right, under locations, manually enter geographic coordinates for a location. So in some cases, such as new construction, Google cannot validate an address. Now you can manually enter the longitude and latitude coordinates of a customer location. Once added, your provided coordinates are used by Service Titan Mobile, Optimized Technician Route, and Map 2.0. Yeah, so on a location page, if you hit the edit pencil to edit that location, there's now a mapping section with a checkbox that says manually set latitude longitude. 
And this is really helpful if you service a lot of newer properties or if you do new construction where the property doesn't actually exist yet. So of course it's not gonna be on Google. Well, you can just manually enter the coordinates and get all of the same benefits that you would if you had an actual validated address. Next under Marketing Pro, we have an overhauled email template screen. Whether you're looking for templates built by the pros at Service Titan or looking for one built by your team, you can use the new email template screen to filter, search for, sort, and preview email templates. Yeah, this is great. That old email template screen didn't have any way to filter or search. There were just pages and pages of templates, which was not ideal. So this is much better. Under campaign costing, you can now see the month costs associated with each of your campaigns that had a cost, allowing you to see how much you're spending on the campaign in comparison to the revenue generated by that campaign. You can also click a value in the cost column to see a breakdown of the campaign's cost over the last year, broken down by month and average daily cost. Next, we have a couple of new audience filters. So there is a technician audience filter, which is available from both the invoices and estimates filter categories. And this filter lets you reach out to customers who receive either an estimate or an invoice from specific technicians. There's also a new expiring credit cards audience filter, which lets you target people whose credit cards on file are about to expire. Okay, next under memberships. Deleted memberships cannot be edited. Now memberships with a deleted status cannot be edited. This prevents the accidental renewal or reactivation of deleted memberships, which can create deferred revenue balance errors. Yeah, so before there was actually a way to make changes to memberships that were in the deleted status, which could potentially cause lots of bookkeeping headaches, especially if you're using deferred revenue. But now that is no longer possible. Next, new membership type options for deferred revenue. So if you use deferred Deferred revenue with memberships, there are new options for handling deferred revenue. You can configure a membership type so that when recurring service events are dismissed, deferred revenue is automatically recognized, or when a membership gets canceled, you can automatically generate a charge or refund invoice. Now, some of these options might require some account configuration depending on what's already on on your account, so I'd recommend working with your CSM on this one. Next, we have improvements when selling memberships. So basically, when selling a membership off of the customer page in the office, if a customer had multiple locations, the system used to pre-populate one of the locations in the recurring services field and in the discounts field, which could potentially lead to some mistakes. So those are no longer pre-selected, it's blank and you have to manually select one. It also no longer pre-populates the business unit field. Next, the deferred revenue checkbox is removed from price book items. So you used to be able to check off on the price book item itself, whether it was a deferred revenue task, but that is now determined by the membership type. So that checkbox is no longer there. Next, we have bulk create renewal estimates. So you can now bulk generate membership estimate renewals in follow-ups. So on the follow-ups page, when you're looking at expiring memberships, you can check off multiple customers and then click that bulk edit button. That will bring up this window where one of the options is build estimates. That way you can build renewal estimates for lots of customers all at once. Next, we have sold dates open on customer memberships report template. Uh, so basically what this note is saying is if you built a report off of the customer memberships report template, you had this filter when pulling the report for the sold on date of the membership, where you could say like, show me memberships that were sold between May 1st and July 1st or whatever. And those date fields used to be pre-populated with some random BS that you would have to overwrite, but now they're blank by default. So we got rid of the BS. All right, under payment collections, this is one I think a lot of people will like, estimates now display deposits. So when presenting estimates to customers, collected deposits are now displayed as line items in the print and email view. This ensures your customers can confirm that you received their deposit or down payment. Yes, and this is when you collect a deposit using the fairly recent payment collections feature. If you've been sleeping on the past few releases, make sure you check that out. Give it a search in the knowledge base. Payment collections is the new official way to collect deposits in Service Titan. And do keep in mind that in order to use that feature, you do need to be on the QuickBooks 2.0 web connector. All right, next under payroll and timesheets, we have centralized payroll settings. So payroll features and configurations now have their own section in settings. You can set pay frequencies, flexible overtime, payroll sign-off terms, labor terms, timesheet codes, and idle time all in one place. Yeah, so if you go into settings and search for payroll, you will now see this new payroll section where you can make changes all in one centralized location. And on that new payroll page, you'll see what this next note is talking about, configurable idle time settings. You can now set technician idle time in your payroll settings. Idle time is when a technician is clocked in, but neither dispatched on a job nor on a meal break. You can configure how much idle time is paid and also set whether after a certain time threshold, none of the idle time is paid. 
So basically here you can configure when a technician is idle, you know, they're not working on a job, they're not driving to a job, they're not on lunch, they're just around. You can set up how much of that idle time is paid time. Next, under photos and videos, we have one of my favorites out of these release notes, the enhanced media experience. We've streamlined the way you see media across Service Titan with an emphasis on making it easier to find, download, or delete media. Now, job, customer, and location records have a dedicated media section called photos and videos. Here you can find photos and videos added by technicians while on a job. The new media section lets you hover over a photo and video thumbnail to select download, delete, or rename individual files. Select multiple media files to download or delete all at once. Select all media files on a record to download or delete. And navigate between photos and videos using the arrow keys on your keyboard. This is great. This is way better than what we used to have. So instead of just being buried in with files, photos and videos now have their own section. Everything has a thumbnail. You can bulk select, you can bulk download. You can rename files, which if you remember last release, the technicians were able to rename files on the mobile side. And now with this, we can rename files on the office side as well. Videos now all have video thumbnails and the media is also now sorted by most recent to least recent. Overall, just a much better experience. All right, next under price book, bulk editing of linked material and equipment items. Now you guys know I've been all about this bulk editing of the price book and here it gets even better. So you can now edit linked materials and equipment items in bulk in the service Titan table of your price book. This allows you to edit linked materials and equipment for similar service items all at once, saving you time and ensuring that the same items are added to all services. Also, now when you are editing equipment in the price book, you can edit the columns in the item table the same way that you can in services. The next enhancement, you can also now tab between fields when editing the item table. So when you're bulk editing now in the price book, you can now just hit the tab key on your keyboard and that will move you on to the next field, making it even closer to an Excel-like experience. Next, you can now export and import discounts and fees. So discounts and fees, if you're not aware, is a gated feature that allows you to put, well, discounts and fees in your price book. So you're able to use it to put like percentage-based discounts or percentage-based fees or flat discounts and flat fees. Talk to your CSM if you are interested in that feature, but with this new update, those discounts and fees are now preserved when exporting the price book to a spreadsheet, basically allowing you to edit those in bulk and then re-import them. Next, we have longer display names for equipment item PDFs. So you can now create display names of up to 150 characters for PDF attachments to equipment items. This lets you create more descriptive names for equipment related PDFs, which helps your technicians more easily identify relevant documents in their price book. Yeah, so you can attach PDF assets to equipment. You've been able to do that for a little while. So like if you have an equipment brochure that you want to attach to the equipment piece in the price book, you can do that. And now with this update, you're able to use longer display names so that your technician can find what they're looking for. <sighs> this is a long one. My, my mouth is dry. I'm gonna get a water. I'll be right back. Whew. Okay, next under projects, exclude adjustment invoices from project invoice if bill to is different. So if the adjustment invoice on a project has a different bill to, the customer invoice for the project does not list the adjustment items. When sending project invoices to your customers, this ensures that they are receiving relevant information. This one does require an account configuration. That configuration is called enable separate print adjustment invoices for another contact. Next under reporting, we have advanced date options for scheduled reports. So when scheduling reports, you can now specify a custom date range to report on. This allows you greater specificity when reporting. For example, you can report on upcoming purchase orders two weeks in advance, giving you more lead time to let your vendors know when you're coming. Yeah, so when you're setting up a scheduled report now, you can set the date range to custom, and you can set that custom date range to be the next X amount of days or the previous X amount of days. Next, we have include counter sales and progress billing in business unit performance reports. Non-job revenue is a new column option in the business unit performance custom report template. Non-job revenue includes membership revenue, counter sales, and progress billing. This column replaces the membership sales and billing revenue column. Non-job revenue is defined as the sum of totals of all the invoice items connected to an income general ledger account on invoices not tied to a job. 
Probably important to point out here as well, counter sales is a gated feature. If counter sales is something you need, talk to your CSM, they can turn that on for you. And progress billing is a feature that is currently still in beta. Next, resized columns are preserved with saved reports. So basically when you're looking at a report in Service Titan and you adjust the column width, because maybe the data is getting cut off and you want to make it a little bit wider or there's too much space and you want to make it narrower. Well, when you save your report changes, that width is now saved as well. So that way you don't have to keep resizing the columns every time you pull the report. Next, we have a unique leads column in campaign summary report template. Unique leads is a new column available in the campaign summary custom report template. Multiple calls from the same phone number to the same marketing campaign number can now be classified as leads that are considered a single unique lead. Multiple calls from the same phone number to the same marketing campaign number, that can be classified as leads, are considered a single unique lead. So basically with this column, if the same person calls into the same marketing phone number five times over two days, that's not gonna be counted as five unique leads, that's only one unique lead. So definitely a helpful metric. Next we have job costing columns in the jobs report template. So the jobs template can now report on job costing. When selecting columns, the new cost totals section contains columns for calculating job costs and profits, including material costs, equipment costs, purchase order costs, payroll adjustments, performance pay, labor pay, labor burden, total revenue, and profit. All right, next under search, we have form search enhancements. To make it easier to find the form you're looking for, the form type filter in the search is now sorted in alphabetical order and shows you which forms are active and inactive. Also, you can now type the name of the form into the form type filter and find specific forms faster. Yeah, so when you're searching for forms, there's this form type field that basically just shows you all of your forms. So if you're only searching for your maintenance checklist form, you can filter down to just that. So now that list is sorted in alphabetical order, plus you have this little mini search within your search. Yo dog, heard you like searching. So you can quickly find the form that you're looking for. Next under Service Titan Mobile, we have enhancements to the mobile follow-up screen. We've overhauled the follow-up experience on Service Titan Mobile, giving your sales technicians the tools they need to follow up on open opportunities and not leave potential revenue on the table. Now technicians can easily see their current, past due, and upcoming follow-ups, making it easy to identify and act on open opportunities. Specific improvements include filter follow-ups by follow-up date or job start date. Previously, you could only filter follow-ups by job start date. Filters are now applied to the follow-ups list after your technician taps submit. Previously, filters were applied when selected, which could make it more difficult to navigate. An easier to use date range filter and opportunities are now sortable in ascending or descending order. Also, opportunities can now be filtered to show opportunities with reminders. Next, we have another one of my favorites from these notes, the SMS wrap-up message. So in the mobile app, in the lower left-hand corner, there is this new little clock icon. And tapping that opens up this new send wrap-up message modal. It says, I will be done in approximately, and by default, it says 15 minutes, but you can change that to 30, 45, 60, or 90 minutes. And then the technician can hit send, and that will send a text message to dispatch, letting them know. This is really useful if you only assign one job to your technicians at a time, or if you have some sort of closeout checklist that you like your office people to go over before a technician leaves a job. This is a really great feature to make it very convenient for your technicians to send that wrap up message. The next note is service equipment using a material. Now a technician will be able to choose a material in order to mark an equipment as serviced. For example, a filter or belt for an air conditioning unit. This update builds on an earlier release which allowed technicians to mark equipment as serviced with a task from your price book. Note that service material links are not yet supported. Okay, so from the mobile app, if you go to the history tab and go into the existing equipment, if you tap this three dot menu, it's called a kebab menu in the upper right hand corner, you can mark that specific equipment piece as serviced using a task from your price book. That's something we got fairly recently. And now with this update, you can also mark that specific equipment piece as serviced using a material from your price book. Then on the office side, on the location page, if you go down to where the equipment is, if you click into that piece of equipment, you'll see this history area where you can see the service history for that specific piece of equipment. So before you were only able to do that with service tasks, Tasks. Now you can do that with service tasks or materials. Next, under Service Titan Web Connector to QuickBooks Desktop, we have a memo field enhancement. When exporting transactions, the memo field in QuickBooks now contains the batch and applied to information that previously only displayed in Service Titan. 
This helps you efficiently group transactions in QuickBooks. And again, this is for the QuickBooks 2.0 web connector. We also have import sales tax items and groups from QuickBooks desktop. So when mapping sales tax zones in Service Titan, you can now import sales tax items and groups from QuickBooks desktop. The import helps you quickly add sales tax zones and ensures that Service Titan tax zones and QuickBooks items and groups match. Again, that's for the 2.0 connector. And a couple of bonus items for you here. These actually aren't listed in the notes, but if you are using the office employee clock in, clock out beta feature, there is this new reminder that reminds your office employees to clock in and clock out. So whenever an office user signs into Service Titan, they will get this little pop-up asking them if they want to go ahead and clock in. And whenever they go to sign out of Service Titan, they will get the same thing, offering to clock them out. And if you have office users that do not use clock in, clock out, there's a checkbox that says basically just don't show this to me anymore. Another thing that's not in these notes, but it is happening with this release, and this one might make you a little sad, so maybe get some tissues ready. Those photo captures, the ones that I know you guys love so much, the ones you're always ranting and raving about on the Facebook page. <sighs> Man, I hate to tell you guys this, they, they've been effectively eliminated. I mean, there are some super rare scenarios where it might pop up, but I gotta be real with you guys, chances are you're never gonna see it again. Look, I'm, I'm sorry guys, I know you guys love picking out those stoplights and stuff, but I'm just the messenger. Do you get it? You get it because everybody hates those. You see what I'm doing? Comedy. And final. <coughs> and finally, under fixes. Daily management report drill downs now updated automatically when a section is opened. So before on a daily management report that has data that's quickly changing, if you opened up a drill down, that would be data from whenever you hit run on the report. But now when you open up a drill down, that information is updated right when you click to open the drill down. Anyways, that's all I got for today. Hey, be sure to hit like on this video if you like this content and found it valuable. Be sure to subscribe to Surface Titan's YouTube channel if you've not done that already. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Appreciate it. Peace.